I don't think that Jacqueline Klein would disagree with this comment. She is a walking, talking miracle. Her faith <laughs> is beautiful. She loves the Lord. And we know you'll be blessed by her willingness to give us some of her time here on My Faith with Homer and Pip. I'm Tommy Pippins. Steve the Homer True and the Holy Spirit came up with this great idea, and it wouldn't happen without our producer on remote, Brent Young. Without further ado, Homer, tee it up, baby, because I, I guarantee you, Jacqueline is going to knock the socks off of anyone within her voice. <laughs> I don't doubt that. But I never know for sure how people want to start. How do you want to start your faith? Because it's up to you. Take it away. Where, where do you, where is the beginning in your mind of my faith? Well, I grew up in a, a Catholic home where we only went to church on the holidays. And I grew up um, being raised by my alcoholic father, who was an alcoholic before my time. And me and my sister were raised by a single dad. And uh, two girls being raised by a single dad. Um, we didn't really share our feelings. Uh, we're taught to be tough. Um, my dad loved us very, very much. Um, but out of spite, robbed us from a relationship with our mother, took us and ran from her. And um, so all of that being said, uh, I grew up brokenhearted. Um, and the influence of my dad's drinking, I started drinking at a very young age, which automatically led into uh, very inappropriate things at my age. Um, <clears throat> I remember when I was young, I prayed to God, things like, why me? Um, you know, just very sad. And I knew the basics. I knew there was a God in my heart. I just knew uh, he created us to be that way. And, um, I knew that there was Jesus who died on a cross for our sins. And I was told here and there that um, Jesus loves you. Um, but it wasn't any sort of teaching in my life. I did the confirmation, the little white dress, um, uh, you know, the baptism as a baby. And uh, all of this led to a lifelong addiction um, till at the end was probably the, the one thing I said I would never do, um, which was put a needle to my arm is the exact thing I ended up doing. And when I had hit that, uh, I knew that, um, that it was bad. And um, I led a life of criminal activity. I'm a 22 time felon and spent a lot of time in jail. And it was a faithful woman of God who came into jail one day. Um, Chaplain Karen is her name into Brown County Jail. And she said to me and a bunch of the other girls asked us the, the, the question, uh, do you know for sure you're going to heaven? And I thought about it. And she says, because most people think that if they're good people on the inside, that they're going to heaven. She says, but this is what the Bible says. <laughs> and that truth spoke so just rang in my heart. I'm like, I think you know, this is, this is right. What she's telling me is right. I thought most of my life, I am a good person. You know, I've done bad things, but on the inside, I'm kind. I'm nice. I never meant to do these things. Um, and so I went back to my jail cell and I accepted Christ into my heart. And from that day forward, um, is when 
I can look back and I can see that uh, I was being chased down by, by Jesus Christ. Um, it's one thing to tell somebody that Jesus loves you. It's another thing to actually receive that love from Jesus. And basically that day in my jail cell all by myself is when I really felt the love of Jesus and that, 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 you know, there's more to life than this. And then I didn't want to live this way anymore. At the time, um, I was the mother of, uh, of um, one child. And I had two more children after that. And I continued in my addiction. But um, each step of the way, I can look back and see where God was drawing me closer and closer and closer to him through my trials in life until finally one day he had his way. <laughs> um, I came to Teen Challenge in 2019. Uh, I had spent my last year in jail. Uh, I had gotten out of jail. And this time, I, I finally did it. I stayed sober. Um, I went to celebrate recovery every week. I went to church every week. I got involved in women's groups. So I was attending groups and churches about three times a week, at least. Um, I didn't have a place to go. Uh, I didn't have anything. I had broken all ties and all my relationships with all my family, including my children. And, um, I started out in a homeless shelter and, um, and I made my way back up until I had uh, a home, a stable home. I had rebuilt uh, trusting relationships with, with all, everybody, all my family. I was seeing my children. I had a job. I was paying my way. And I was, I was being mentored and, and working towards uh, a life of mentoring others. And I, I was in a relationship um, and, and that relationship started to fall apart. And when it did, I relapsed and I, sorry about that. Uh, I relapsed and, and my, my thought process was if, if I had gained all of this back and I had gained the trust back and the relationships back, everything that I worked so hard to gain back and I was willing to just throw it all away again there is something inside of me that um i really need help with uh that it, it, there's just something i need more help i need that to me didn't make sense that i was willing to so quickly throw it all away the relationship uh falling apart and me going back to using was a pattern um that i had recognized and so uh, somebody spoke teen challenge to me and basically I, I didn't hesitate. I was uh, accepted and in, in the program the very next week. I, um, I, I came to the program and four months later, I had found some healing and thought that I was okay. You know, I had come out of uh, a very short relapse. I had a couple years of sobriety prior to that. And so I left the program and, um, and this, this, I left to back to that relationship and the same thing happened again. <laughs> and so, um, I knew that when I left, it wasn't right. The Holy spirit convicted me. I ignored it. Um, and on top of that, when my relationship had fell apart, I had relapsed again. And while I was relapsed, life, you know, life just happens. Things that um, you never expect to happen, they just, they happen. You know, life happens. And uh, life threw a very unexpected blow at me. Um, basically, a parent's worst nightmare. 
my four-year-old baby boy got diagnosed with leukemia. And so that, it was my lowest point. I thought I had already hit rock bottom once, (laughs) but um, when I was stuck in a hospital with, and you know, this is 2020, January 11th of 2020 is when he gets diagnosed uh, with leukemia. And I'm sitting in the hospital at his bedside and I'm watching the news, a deadly virus just hit Seattle and New York and is gonna, it's sweeping across our country. And my son's immune system is completely, he just doesn't have one. And I, I, I can't believe my life. I, I, I don't even know where to begin, what to do. I started out praying to God for my son and him and my, him and his grandma would take shifts at the hospital. And when I would leave the hospital to go, you know, home to take a break, I wouldn't even go home. I would go in the casino and I would sit in the casino and spend all my money and not be able to sleep and, and get high. And I would go back to the hospital And nobody knew. I hid it from everybody. Um, I was, you know, supposed to be on this path to sobriety and doing well as far as my family and everybody knew. And um, my son was really suffering. And the doctors told me that he wasn't going to make it. So basically I had given up. I didn't know how I was even going to explain it to his brothers who would, you know, they were really close. And I didn't know how to help myself either at this point. I couldn't tell anybody that I had relapsed, you know? And I would pray to God for him to give give my son life. And I started to question God. Uh, I knew God to be good. But this wasn't good. And I didn't understand what was going through my son's body. I didn't understand how God could allow this to happen to him. I'm guilty. My son is innocent. All these things. And I knew that if I was questioning God, that I really needed help. And so all I could think about was getting back to Teen Challenge where I could develop that relationship with the Lord and maybe my son would have a chance. Um, A verse came to my mind when I was sitting at my son's bedside and it was, I don't even know the address. I think it's James something. And it says in there that um, the prayers of a righteous man have power. And I didn't feel like my prayers had any power, but I knew that I could get there, right? That I could, I knew that I could get back to God. I knew he was accessible. I knew he'd welcome me with open arms. And so I called Teen Challenge and I'm, I'm processing this information in my head. I'm like, okay, um, it, if I go back, I'll only be two hours away from home. Um, you know, I, I, I knew that Jesus was the only way for my life and my son's life. No matter what I had to do at this point, it's whatever I have to do. If I have to be away, if I have to take the risk of never seeing my son again, it was a reality to me, a reality that I had to face. And um, uh, I called Teen Challenge and they told me that I could come back but I couldn't come back to this teen challenge because a woman was here seeking the Lord that I knew. And so right then and there, that was like a a roadblock. I was like, okay, Lord, I know you're speaking to me. I know you're doing something. I know that this is what I need to do, but you're really not going to make this easy on me, are you? That's what I said to him. And in the same second that I said no, something in me said yes. 
And I said, okay. So they said team challenge of your choice. I uh, chose New York because the history of Teen Challenge is from there. And I love the history. I love Teen Challenge. I love David Wilkerson, huge fan. And so I bought a plane ticket to New York Adult and Teen Challenge. Um, in order for me to get on that plane, I had to literally put my son in God's hands. And that's exactly what I did. And fast forward, testament, really hard year. Um, but fast forward to now, April 30th of this year, my son um, took his last chemo injection and he is 100% remission. Um, he is more alive than my other two children. <laughs> Um, he is, he's my inspiration and, um, uh, the doctors can't, the, you know, there's small miracles within the big miracle. The doctors can't believe how quickly his levels are leveling out after the chemotherapy, things like iron, they say never goes back to normal without further treatment not chemotherapy, but just further treatment. Um, the, the Lord is just the way that he carried me through and healed me of my past sins while healing my son of his uh, cancer. And um, it wasn't just the healing part. It was the way that he carried my son through the treatment, the very painful, very expensive treatment, just was amazing. Absolutely. There's no words to describe. And so I choose to live my life for him, bottom line. <laughs> um, I, I don't know what to ask. <clears throat> That is a first, Jacqueline. That is a first. <laughs> but I well no, what what is the best thing about God to you? The story is incredible. The the um like today, if you have 30 seconds, 60 seconds to tell one someone about God, about your faith, what do you start with given all that's going on in your life? Oh, uh, that's a good question. <laughs> I'm not too sh short winded, I'm more long winded, but um, the joy that the Lord has given me to carry me through um, is uh, evident and it's, it's, it's unbelievable. Um, uh, trials in life, life is hard, you know, um, and the joy that he gives me through it all is, is absolutely amazing. It's, it's something that I wouldn't trade in for anything. And so it really makes me stop and think before I make a decision, which direction I'm going to go. <laughs> um, uh, I, I know now, um, that, uh, God created us and we are an expression of his love and that he created us for a purpose that life has a purpose. Um, and it's not to just be out there, uh, doing, um, first of all, whatever you think you can do, or just meandering through life with no, there's just so much more to life when you know the Lord. Teen Challenge is about helping others. What do you say to someone that you can see is in a condition or in a relapse or at a, at a place you have been at before? What's 
Oh man. So they, I encounter on a daily basis, uh, stories that are comparably worse than mine. You, you can't compare stories, but, um, I'm a, I'm a very humble person in, in character and personality. Uh, I, um, so I encounter every scenario and every situation and it depends. It depends on what their situation and their scenario is. But I always tell them that the most powerful thing is a person's testimony. When you can see and tell somebody, I used to be where you were at. And I tell them a little bit gory detail, you know, where I used to be. Hey, I used to be a meth and heroin addict living on the streets, putting a needle to my arm, not knowing which way to go. And now I work for the organization that helped save me. It was a tool that God used, right? I mean, more than a tool, this teen challenge sits you down in front of the Lord and helps you develop a relationship with the one who created you. I mean, you just can't get any better than that. And so that's what I say, a person's testimony. So listen, I used to be where you were and here I am today. And what I'll do is I'll direct them. We have videos on our website of testimonies too. So I'll tell them personally, but I'll ask them to go watch videos for themselves. And I have people tell me no and hang up on me. No and hang up on me over and over and over again. And I'll, I'll, I'll do as much as I can. I'll call them back and call them back a few times. And usually when I tell them, hey, I used to be where you're at, it changes their whole perspective. And then they're like, really? You mean I can get somewhere? And yeah. <laughs> and it changes their whole entire perspective. I had a woman tell me, when I saw that you went through where started out where I am that's what changed for me that's what changed my mind in all of your life when have you felt the closest the closest to God um well this is uh there's a couple different times and when I was going through the worst of the worst of the worst is when I felt the closest to God because I would reach out to him in those times you know when things are going good you're kind of like you know but it was in the hard times that I always feel the closest to God and uh the one the the year that I was in my program Now, I am graduated, I did a year internship, and I almost immediately upon graduating started ministry school. Um, I finished the certified level, a credentialed minister, and I'm on the license level to be a licensed pastor um, right now in my second year of ministry school. And it was, now I'm saying that because I'm a leader, (laughs) And I am being trained and and educated to to lead and and, um, going through all this. But it was in my program, the year that I was in my program, that I felt the closest to God. (laughs) Um, When I, you know, you're in your devotions morning and night. Now I have to fight for that time and make that time myself. You know, it's a little different, but it was in the hard times. And it was in my program that I felt the closest to God. And, oh boy, that's, that's like, I fight for that feeling. I fight for that time to feel that close to God, you know? And Tommy will be next. But (laughs) when you look back, when did you feel the furthest from God? Um, the furthest from God was probably, and I'm really thinking about this. There are, there's one, 
to two occasions. One is when I left the program. Um, when I made the decision to turn away and, and that's exactly what it was. I made the decision to turn away. Um, can I look back and see that, that, that he was there? Absolutely. Um, and then another, t the, another specific time um, was when I was questioning God in my son's um, affliction. And that's how I know that it was the devil because he was literally working and moving. I questioned God over and over and over in my mind that I was stuck in this place where I, I needed to know why. I was trying to understand why, why, why. It was so bad. I, I couldn't function. I couldn't work. I couldn't, I couldn't do anything. I couldn't um, I went to the crisis center in my town because I just wanted to die. I couldn't do life. I couldn't move forward whatsoever. I felt so helpless in, in that there was a short time there where I just was questioning why, but but the Lord, when I went to Teen Challenge in New York, he gave me this vision of his hand reaching down into my basement bedroom of my home and picking me up with his big old godly loving hand and setting me over in New York Teen Challenge. And that's what he did. That's exactly what he did. He picked me up and he put me there. And so there was no doubt in my mind that as I was a thousand miles away from home, but I was right where he wanted me to be. And so I never got the urge to leave or walk out of my program, but I will tell you one short, amazing testimony is while I was in my program, my son's going through treatment. They allowed me to FaceTime him every day. And uh, one day he got really sick they do these experimental treatments. And so I knew every chemical that was going into his body. I looked it up online. I had my leaders look them up and I would read. And there's always a list of side effects. And then there's a list of little bit um, less common side effects. And then there's like maybe one or two rare side effects that never happened. He was getting immunotherapy, um, a therapy that parents beg their children to get. It's, it's, new and top of the line and um there's this one rare side effect called uh vod venous occlusive disease they don't have treatment for it um it's so rare and my son fell ill and got this and so what do i do right do i come home is this going to be it what do i do lord do i get on a plane and so at the moment, the doctors told me, okay, he's got this, but we got him stable. We have a 21 day treatment plan in place for him. We're, we're, we're getting this drug up here from St. Jude. He's in Green Bay. And um, they said, right now he's stable. Well, the next day, everything that they said that they didn't want to happen, if this doesn't happen, if this doesn't happen, he's okay. Well, all of that happened and he went to ICU and um, he was in a, a five-day coma at this point, you guys, uh, not waking up and, and both his belly filled up with fluids and both of his lungs collapsed and he was on his way out of this world. And I went into worship that night and the the ugly cry worship worship god like i just had this overwhelming sensation to just you learn you learn to worship god through your trials and to just give it to him and stand in faith and well most people would say get home to your your son let's get on a plane i just there was this something i knew god had me right where he wanted me he didn't want me to leave i needed to finish this i needed to do this 
And the next morning, uh, within minutes of them administering this treatment to my son, he woke up singing praise and worship to God in his hospital bed. And he went home the very next day with no treatment whatsoever. He just miraculously recovered from venous occlusive disease, which is where arteries to your liver get clogged and every organ in your body shuts down. And so just another, you know, the Lord really showed himself to me in mighty ways. So. Yeah, Tommy, Tommy, let's see, let's see, let's see ahead to that. (laughs) By the time we get to this point, it's like, that is so great. But as you know, firsthand, Jacqueline, I think we're all close to addiction of any kind in some way. It just is so hard. What was the difference between the first time and the the second time for you when you just totally surrendered? How did you get there? There will be people who hear your voice who are parents of of people with addiction, perhaps even those who have this, this horrible addiction. What was the difference between the first time and the second time for you? Um, well, the, you know, the first time led to the second time. And so let me tell you, it all started back in the jail cell when I decided to accept Christ into my heart and the Holy spirit comes and Jesus comes and lives in your heart. And I started reading my Bible every time that I had, um, some sort of sanity. It it was a slow process over time. Um, but I started reading my Bible and I didn't even know what I was doing. I didn't know I was hiding the word of God in my heart. I didn't, I just started reading my Bible because that's what I was taught to do once, you know? Um, and so little by little over years, I started reading my Bible and then I went to teen challenge, which is a, a teaching of a firm foundation, how to really rely on Jesus And not only that, but like just even knowing that I was created by him for a purpose um, and then leading into this, it was, it was, it was a process to get there. Um, It was prayer. Uh, Somebody was out there praying for me, probably more than one person. My mom tells me today that uh, I spent every day of my life praying for you. And now I spend every day thanking God. <laughs> so that's really powerful. Prayer is powerful. And God hears our prayers, even when he does, we don't think so. And so holding on to those truths. You just got to hold on to those truths. Sometimes, even if it's only by a thread. Um, but the, the Lord used that circumstance in my life. He, uh, Genesis, I think it's 50, 20 or 20, 50. It's one of those two for sure. Um, uh, uh, now I'm drawing a blank. But um, what the what the devil meant for evil, God will turn to good, mm-hmm. and that's what he did. That's exactly what he did in my life. Uh, sickness in our world is sin. Mm-hmm. It is a, a side effect, a product of sin, and um, and the, and that verse right there, the, the, the Lord with the, what the devil meant for evil, God will turn to good. It's just fascinating. You're in a spot now where you said, I didn't even want to live with your faith and with this program at great lakes adult and teen challenge with its incredible success rate. Here you are. Uh, and you're helping save lives where you are. It, it, talk about that. Did you ever believe that you would be in this spot to reach out and pay it forward to honor God? And now you're becoming a pastor. Yeah, I never, never, Tom, did 
that I believe in a million years that um, I would be any sort of help or influence. I couldn't even help myself <laughs> most of my life, majority of it. Um, and so, no, I never thought. And so that's just the goodness and the glory of God. He's, he's big and he will take you places that you could never even imagine. And sometimes, um, sometimes it's just by a mustard seed of faith. I'd like to say after him, you know, even today, he's showed himself to me in mighty, mighty ways. And sometimes I, I just hold on to that mustard seed of faith. Okay, Lord, like I can't really see it, but, um, but I've, I've, I remember, and I've, I know I, somebody told me this once, you know, that, uh, that if I just hold on and keep putting one foot in front of the other, that you'll be there. And so that's just what I do. That's it. That's just what you do, you know, with your faith. It's mm -hmm. faith in, in God. He, he honors that, you know. <laughs> yeah, you said it. You honor him. The, Go ahead, please. The Bible's true. <laughs> yeah, that is. We count our powerful. <laughs> I always like to get back to Homer if he has something, but just one more question. A comment and a question, I guess. Are you blown away by how much God loves you? I guess it's two questions and not a comment. And does it help you in times of temptation? As you go forward, as we all do with our struggles in life at any level, a day and a moment at a time. Absolutely. Uh, I am most of the time in awe of God and him loving me. When I think about it, my heart just literally, I can feel my heart swell. I asked God when I was in my program, listen, he chased me down, um, but he doesn't need me. He can easily replace me. He's God, right? And so I'm like, why? Why would you chase me down? Why? Why? What do you, if you can so easily replace me, then what is it? And he simply told me in my spirit, he says, because I want you because mm. he loves me because, and so, yes, absolutely. It helps me to hang on, um, in times of temptation. Um, I have developed the ability to think before I act. I didn't have that before, you know? And so I do, before I act, I sit down and I, I, I consider God in my life and where this would take me in relation to him. And um, so it, yes, to your question, uh, uh, I was gonna say one more thing along those lines. Like I said earlier, it's one thing for somebody to tell you Jesus loves you. I tell people all the time, Jesus loves you. But it's another thing to actually receive that from him. And oh man, it'll put you in a new, a new life. <laughs> There's the joy in that wonderful smile. Homer? Yeah. I can't. No. It's, <laughs> that's going to take enough to, to watch this a second time and, and go through all of this. Uh, you know everybody watching is, is praying for you that you don't have another relapse and imagining what you can do. And I'm curious as to your first sermon. I bet you've already figured out but I think that's probably seeing what you can do, praying that God will continue to touch you so you don't have another relapse. I know of Teen Challenge, and I love their honesty that it's forever. You're never, you've never beaten it. You've beaten it till today, but you can't. And they accept that and, and, and admit that and don't run away from it. And, yep. and I'm sure you're, you're a part of that. Yeah. Um, so... Um, I, I can honestly say, um, that the Lord has delivered me from my drug addiction, delivered, like my temptation is not to go out there and use, I encounter the same 
drugs and um, tools to use them. Um, just working in this ministry, sometimes by myself. Um, what I'm trying to say is I've had plenty of opportunity, but I can honestly say, but the Lord uses everything that I see here. Now I'm speaking about my life being healed and um, I see, oh, I get the pleasure and honor of watching all these other people's lives being changed right in front of my eyes and being an active part of that. And so ministry, a lifelong, um, you know, endeavor uh, 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 for me. Um, and, and, you know, this is the, what I'm trying to say is I stand so far on the other side of that. I see destruction. I see what it does. And I don't want any part of that anymore. I don't care. Um, and so it's, it's not a temptation of mine. Now, do I have temptations? Yes, but it's, it's, I, I believe I am 100% delivered from using drugs. Sounds like a good spot to end, Homer. What do you say, good friend? Yep, yep. yep. Her name is Jacqueline Klein, and, and <laughs> thank you for your willingness to be open to share your pain and to share your victory in Jesus. You are a great woman of Christ, and as Homer indicated, he has some great plans for you ahead. You're already a superstar. God bless you and your family. It's been a pleasure. We thank you so much. The pleasure and honor is all mine, guys. Thank you. Betcha. So for Steve the Homer True and our marvelous producer, Brent Young, I'm Tommy <laughs> Pippins. We hope and pray. We know that you will be blessed by this share of Jacqueline. We're all together walking uh, through all the temptations. We're walking the road to the cross and through it, and what a day we'll have in eternity. God bless Amen. you, everybody. My faith with Homer and Pip. Until next time. God bless. <laughs> Thank you. Wonderful job. Thank, Thank you. you.